This is NMC Rough Cuts, presented by Bell. This podcast series is brought to you by the National Music Center. We're a registered charity that amplifies the love, sharing, and understanding of music from our home here at Studio Bell on Treaty 7 territory in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm Graham Lassard, music producer and recording engineer at the National Music Center. Each episode of NMC Rough Cuts explores the songwriting and recording process of a compelling Canadian artist. Learn how an original song comes to life over a one-day recording session at Studio Bell and hear the story behind the tune. You can watch episodes at amplify.nmc.ca or listen anywhere you get your podcasts. If you enjoy the show, please take time to give a five-star rating and review. It really helps us out. Hey, I'm Graham Lassard, and today I'm here with Kate Stevens at the NMC Studios. Kate's a singer and songwriter in Calgary. Hey, Kate, how's it going? I'm doing so, so well, Graham. How are you? I'm doing really well, too. So Kate and I have spent the last day with her band recording a new song called Through and Through. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about how you wrote that song? Oh, great. Great question. I, uh... I had the pleasure of writing with my boys. Uh, we didn't really write a lot of songs together, but I wrote this one with Kyle and Cam, uh, my bass player and keyboard player. And uh, I'm in love, which is so, so nice, Graham. It's not, I don't pick real winners, so this has been a really good uh, and easy kind of uh, relationship. And I just wanted to represent that of all the things that, that I love about him. And, and it, it really helped that Kyle and Cam are also in love with their respective partners. So uh, so it makes it nice to, to be on the same page of that. And just talking about all the little things that you, you enjoy and the, and the small moments you don't really think about. And uh, I wanted to put those into song and, uh, and kind of do a little homage to each and every single one of our love interests. Do you often co-write together? No, which is hilarious. Uh, th- they'll provide a lot of really great sometimes iffy feedback <laughs> um, into the sessions and stuff. But but no, uh, this is, was, a, was a one of our first times actually sitting down and uh, and creating. I, I brought the song idea to them and we just ran with it. So, Do you think that um, you see yourself writing more like this in this collaborative way? Yeah, I love it. I've been super, super lucky to do a lot of Zoom writes uh, recently. Uh, I, I've been writing with a lot of great people from Edmonton and Calgary, and uh, it's really, really cool. And I think uh, collaboration is key. It just adds another another ear. It adds an, another kind of musician's uh, take on what you're writing. And and I think it's it's the way of, uh, of what I want to keep doing, because uh, it's just when you're stuck and you find yourself stuck in a couple grooves that you wouldn't necessarily hear because you're so immersed in your own song uh, and having another person saying, well, you know, you've already done that run two times or you've already said that rhyming scheme. And and I think there's a better word for that. So having that there is just really, really nice. And it makes the situation and and, and session a whole lot easier. And that's kind of uh, been a theme over the last day when we've been working on this song, right? Like there've been so many people in Mm -hmm. um, the creative process. I mean, after the song was written, then actually producing it together. Maybe you could tell me like what your experience was like over the last day. What was it like to work with so many different musicians on this song? Oh my God, I've just been spoiled. It's been so, so nice to uh, to work with so many different great musicians and great players who all each individually bring something different to the, to the track, right? Uh, I really wanted this song to be a collaboration between you, between the musicians, between me, between everybody who's involved because that's what I that's what I envisioned in my brain was this big, huge, old kind of soul track uh, that that we could all bring together and create. And you know, I, I I never had this much production and this many people on one of my songs before, and I was really nervous coming in here. I was really really nervous um, because I'm a vocalist and we have to be the star of the show. Uh, and uh, and I and I want my vocals to be front and center and uh, and kind of what carries my songs because that's what I care about. Um, and it's the same goes for if you're a guitar player, right? It's just how you would feel the push and pull with your instrument. My instrument's right here, right? Um, those at home can't see me, but I'm patting my chest. And that's what I love about vocals is that we all have each individual instruments that wouldn't necessarily be on another person. So it just makes it really easy uh, and fun when great artists bring in their own take and bring in their own instrument. And I just get to float above them and uh, not get lost in and I think that everyone just weaved around uh, in the track really really nicely and there's no stepping on any toes and just really open beautiful 
fun track. So, you know, we'll, we'll play the track in a little bit here, but um, without giving too much away, uh, obviously it is, I think, based around the voice. There's drums, bass, piano, electric guitar, and a horn section. Mm -hmm. So it's so interesting to hear you talk about, you know, the importance of foregrounding the vocal and the lyrics and the story, but then also wanting to float above this big, big sound. What's the inspiration for that, for wanting to, you know, tell a clear story and have the vocal front and center, but also have this this mass of music um, framing the vocal? I'm always inspired by Aretha, you know, where Aretha Franklin is one of my huge, huge inspirations. And, and her work tracks just got released, I think it was, uh, it was in 2020 or 2021. And I just sat down and lit a candle, had a glass of an adult bevy and, uh, and just listened. And I just, to hear the musicians move around her and to hear them all work together and create something beautiful. And then of course you add the best, the best vocals in the world uh, on top of those. So, uh, so creating this, I really wanted the, 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 the track side and the background and, and kind of just what it would sound like to be like an Aretha work tape. Um, and then when we were writing the song, there's a lick in the song that sounds awfully, awfully Stevie Wonder-esque. And, and it, we kind of just came to be like that. I'm a sucker for a good walk down and I'm a sucker for a good moving line that really makes you feel something. And, um, and as we were writing, Cam said, he was like, this could be a Stevie song. And I was like, no, no. And then we listened back and I was like, this could be a Stevie song. <laughs> so it's a mix of, uh, of Stevie Wonder and Aretha. And then my, my brain instantly went to um, Until You Come Back to Me, which is a Stevie Wonder song that he wrote for Aretha. Mm. He called her up one night and said, I got a song for you. So, uh, so that's kind of what I wanted this to be was this nice brassy uh, retro kind of track, but with a lot of modern influences. I mean, we were talking about the Dap Kings. We were talking about Lake Street Drive, you know, like just uh, a, a million different uh, different artists that that are all in my brain at, at once. So uh, so it's been it's been really nice working and having other musicians who have that many artists rattling around in there. So yeah, it's so interesting to think about the different challenges of collaborating with a large cast mm -hmm. of contributors. Right, you've got all the creative challenges of uh, different opinions and ideas and and different voices, and then you also have um, simple things like making people's schedules line up and you know now more than ever trying to get people in the same room to work mm -hmm. in a way that's comfortable and, and safe for everybody so the way we actually went about recording with this big band was kind of strange right <laughs> like we sort of did it inside out a little bit because we started pretty small with bass and drums and vocal and then the running joke during the horns was well you guys got here before guitar and piano so don't take all the good notes, right? <laughs> and that was the coolest part too, was the a lot of the times in my band, um, those boys love playing with each other. I was super, super lucky to have Kyle Tenov, Barry Mason, uh, Cam Bowie, and Carson Gant on this track uh, for my, my core band. And and they know what they sound like. They, they play with each other so well, but splitting them up is, is really, really hard to kind of figure out, okay, how do these two interact with each other and what sonic landscape are we going to be able to play with with these two so it was really nice being able to pair drums and bass uh just like the rhythm section and, and see what they create and they, they they made so many cool choices that wouldn't necessarily have been made if, if some chording instruments were, were thrown into the mix like exactly. that there's disco that yeah. we wouldn't have put in if it weren't for both of them just kind of feeling that groove and 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 kind of digging into that a little bit deeper and uh same thing with with keys and and, and guitar like you know cam loves to play the, all the twinkles and all the craziness and barry just kind of grounds him he brings him right back down and and they both just make this beautiful open sound with both of their instruments but adds that kind of campy playfulness that that i love about uh, all of them really so you know it was so cool to see the different personalities at work that way and then also um you know one of the things they say about creativity is that it can often be about um, working within limitations, right? And that was also so cool to see because it was a, a really limiting factor. You know, when um, we were recording guitar and bass, there's already a big, uh, interesting sounding horn section that really changed how, how those guys had to approach their instruments because they didn't have a lot of space anymore. And so mm -hmm. it was really an exercise. And what can I do with this uh, little bit of room left on the track that's still gonna contribute something and, and make it feel 
like more than a token piano part or more than a token guitar part. So they thought that was like a really fun thing for me today was, you know, seeing that unfold. Mm -hmm. And that was just scheduling. <laughs> that was scheduling. Exactly. That was just to the craziest it, part. <laughs> to bring it back to the point, it wasn't, that wasn't a planned, like creative <laughs> experiment. <laughs> that was the way that it unfolded because of mm -hmm. when we could get people and how, how we could record, you know, yeah. safely. And, and that, that's the, the, the craziest part about all this is seeing how the music industry has evolved uh, and, and adapted to mm -hmm. the weird world that we live in uh, mm -hmm. of kind of, you know, virtual stuff like Zoom recording and, and kind of at home recording, um, but bringing people in at, at different times, making sure the room is clean, making sure we're all following the safety uh, requirements and the health requirements. And I think that, you know, being here, it's been really wonderful to feel safe to feel there's no question in your mind you just get to come in play and create so yeah for anyone watching uh, the video version of this podcast you'll see that kate and i are in different rooms right now kate is in our studio uh live room a and i'm up here in the control room in front of the uh, trident console and we're set up this way for the interview just to um comply with all the covid precautions which of course you know are a major factor these days when you're planning any kind mm. of collaboration uh, or any kind of recording project so you talked about um co-writing this track and you did that in person with uh cam uh your keyboard player and uh with um kyle your bass player in a studio and then you talked about all the co-writing that you're doing with zoom and stuff what's the difference in working with people in a room compared to trading ideas over a screen <laughs> latency is a big one <laughs> in music for sure you can't is, really right? do a duet right now <laughs> over zoom maybe i'll just take a quick second and it's a kind of a technical thing latency it just means the delay time mm -hmm. between when you stop and somebody else starts mm -hmm. and um i think a lot of people now are aware of what an impact that can have, never mind a duet, even on a conversation. Oh, for sure. Right, so that is a big one in music. I've started lagging in real life now, and it's <laughs> yeah. awful. Well, we're all lagging in real life a little bit. <laughs> um, but it's definitely a little bit harder. I, uh, I'm i 110% an extrovert, I don't know if you can tell, but <laughs> for spending the day with me. Um, but I just, I love people and I love feeding off of their energy. And after, you know, doing a Zoom right for four hours, you, you feel that fatigue that you wouldn't necessarily feel from just talking with someone. You know, you're looking at yourself, you're seeing how you look, and you're kind of analyzing everything that they're doing. And, uh, and it makes it kind of hard, but I feel like, you know, with Google Docs and with a lot of different software, it makes it really easy nowadays to... to, to set up camp and just collaborate with with a bunch of different artists and i think it's really cool that we're all connected now i think that you know you can write with someone who's in nashville and be in calgary still you know there's so many different ways that you as an artist can expand your horizons and expand your genre i think has been the coolest thing to 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 just kind of reach out and see what's out there and, and see what sticks so let's switch gears for a second here kate you have been doing this for a while now um you're not an emerging artist anymore. You've definitely made a name for yourself. And and uh, what's it like, you know, to think back on some of your early work and uh, and and compare it to what you're doing now? Oh man, if I could go tell 16 year old Kate Stevens, it's gonna be okay. Just calm down, please. <laughs> oh my gosh, for all of our sakes, uh, I would. But I think that you know, growing up as an artist, and I started doing this when I was like 13, 14. And uh, the studios were always really scary because I started doing live performing and, uh, you know, going into these big studios and sitting down in these very sterile rooms was always kind of just like, you know, you go in and you're, and you're terrified, but of course you meet the right people and the producers are in there to help you and all the other musicians kind of help you achieve your dream of what this tr the track sounds like. Um, but I think that, you know, when I was younger, I wasn't really involved with the recording process as much as I would like to be. Like, I would just kind of show up, sing, and say, yeah, that sounds great. But I've, I've learned now to, to let my voice be heard with, oh, well, you know, I'd like to redo those vocals, or that guitar patch doesn't really sound the same way that I had it in my brain. So being able to to finally work and play and and be considered a heavy hitter if you if you won't be so shy mm. um uh it's been nice to to just kind of you know have that collaborative edge and 
and and not feel guilty about saying please do that again <laughs> right, right yeah <laughs> well we talked a couple times today also about the difference in performing for an audience mm-hmm. and then singing in front of a microphone I mean I think it's true for all instruments but maybe especially for a vocalist mm-hmm. what, what's it like in the studio and maybe it I don't know you can tell me if, if this is true but I would imagine it's different performing in a studio when you haven't been performing in front of a live audience as much as you have through most of your career it's different uh i think that's a really good point of studio vocals and live vocals are always going to sound different for live vocals you're there to impress you're there to engage the audience you're there to kind of any fun tricks or or tips that you can do to kind of pull them in and, and, and make them feel something but with studio work it's a lot different of you know, today I was playing to a handful of you in the booth, uh, and and it was just really, really cool to kind of dip into things and, and why I wrote the song, you know, remembering those softer, sweeter moments um, that I don't usually get to on stage because you're there for, you know, 30 minutes and you got to boom, 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 get all these songs and emote as much as you can as quickly as possible. But with the studio stuff, it, it, it's nice to kind of dip into yourself, remember why you wrote it, and uh, and... and what I love doing in the studio is, is playing off the words that I sing. Like there's a couple words where I just, I fall off of them, right? Because it's, it's how it works or you're sweeter than, and how are you going to make that song sweeter, right? And I flap my arms a lot and I move around a lot and you can probably hear me breathing quite heavily in a lot of this track. Um, but it's just, I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm spoiled, right? Like to be able to be with a beautiful microphone and to hear myself because in a live setting, you're, working over audience members you're working over clinking of dishware and glasses and the sound guy screaming at you from the booth (laughs) and uh so it's just it's a nice controlled space that you get to check in with yourself you get to check in with your voice and uh and really just put out your best performance it's interesting that you mentioned being an extrovert i uh i'm glad you mentioned that otherwise maybe it would have slipped past me (laughs) but it's a place like what you just described is not always the most comfortable environment for an extrovert. Was it something that you had to learn to enjoy as much as you did? I love it. I I, I love being on stage and I and I love, you know, hitting that note that gets all the people in the bar to just turn. Mm-hmm. The hardest shows for me are living room shows. Are the hardest shows are when it's an intimate moment and it's an intimate setting and, you know, there's five people in the club and they're all looking at you and no one's talking and no one's moving. Because then you're like, oh my God, what do I, I got to sing. Like, oh my God, you can't pull out the same stops you necessarily would for a larger crowd. Uh, and I've played festivals where, you know, everyone's watching and listening and it's beautiful, but there still are so many eyes on you that you can't focus on a handful of people. But I think with those smaller shows, it, it's it's kind of just, you got to fall into how you would sing in a studio, right? I, I you play music for other people, but you play music for yourself too, right? Mm-hmm. You got to figure out why you're doing this and, and and how can I have a good night too? For anyone listening that doesn't uh, know much yet about Kate Stevens, the singer and songwriter, you said earlier that you started when you were 13. How did you get started in this? Uh, I found ukulele at a garage sale. That was my catalyst into writing. You know, being an angsty teen and a theater kid, I always had poetry and, and words floating around in my brain, but I didn't have a vehicle to express them. And I always sang. Like, I, I was singing before I could talk. And I know that's super cliche and cheesy, and I've got one hell of a stage mom, but <laughs> but it just, it was something for me. And, and, and kind of hammering out those chords on a, on a garbage ukulele that I got for $3 and, and just saying, this is it. This is what I love to do. And, you know, you play the farmer's markets and you, and you play the necessary places you got to play when you're 13. And then now I'm just, uh, I'm really, really lucky and, and, and really appreciative and, and grateful that I get to play in the National Music Center, you know. You mentioned earlier that during uh, COVID and the different lockdowns, it wasn't always easy to feel inspired or even at times to necessarily feel like an artist that you might go for a period of time without writing a song. And of course, performing was off the table for quite a long time. How did you manage to stay inspired through those those months? <laughs> I would schedule my breakdowns. Uh, no, I, I just, I, I the, the funniest thing for me is that we were gifted a lot of time. Right. You know, as artists, we're usually go, go, go. You got to go on to this show. You got to go record this and then come back to your house and teach. And it, it, it just kind of stopped the noise for a bit. And I think that a lot of people 
we're seeing a lot of you know projects being released now because everyone was writing in covid when everything first happened and they they just wrote the whole album they just sat down and 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 just did it and i uh i wasn't lucky to do that <laughs> i uh i was in a beautiful happy relationship that just started mm -hmm. so a lot of my songs come from you know love and loss and heartbreak and just universal themes but uh i was like i'm really happy why am i not writing as much as i want to be and then i started to dip into why do i feel happy what why do i love this person and 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 how can I grow and be with this person and, and, and cherish them while we're in the middle of a global pandemic? Um, but uh, but yeah, we, we just start, kind of started writing and I would call Kyle and call Cam and be like, I really, I, I like these songs that I'm writing about my boyfriend. Do you think he'll mind? And they're like, oh, just don't tell him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and yeah, so I just started writing and writing and, and we, we have, you know, like a, a handful of really good songs that we just... We're like, we got to do something with this. So I was really lucky to have my support system of my guys uh, to kind of just push me through and, and say, keep writing. You know, I, I learned a lot of really cool tricks when it comes to at home recording, uh, video software, right. audio software that yeah. I would never have necessarily known before, uh, before going into this. So yeah, I've been really, really lucky to, uh, to keep doing this during uh, the crazy, crazy world. So yeah. It sounds like inspiration wasn't a problem but it sounds like it was kind of new territory i've heard a lot of people say that it's harder to write happy songs than oh, sad yeah. songs do you still think that's true or is it just something new that you're learning about as an artist now well i'm growing with my relationship and i'm growing in my relationship and and he's noticed it too now if he'll be like i don't like that word you know you can find another word and he's not a musician in, in my kind of vein he plays a tuba so Maybe we'll feature that on the next track, Graham. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's been really nice to kind of discover new things about myself, uh, being in a really healthy, happy relationship. Um, and uh, and yeah, the little things, I, I, I don't take them as granted as, as, as I used to. But, you know, he gets kind of embarrassed whenever we have a fight and he automatically thinks I'm going to go write an angry song about him in the other room. And that's just not how that happens now. Not every time. Not every not. time. Yeah. I mean, those ones don't get don't don't get recorded and published, but <laughs> the voice notes are there. <laughs> um, but no, it's just been it's been really, really beautiful and wonderful to kind of grow as an artist. And, and that's something I was thinking about the other day about a lot of my audience has grown with me. You know, I started when I was 13, 14, and those people liked what I was doing then, and a lot of them have stuck by me since I've been kind of finding myself as an artist and, and really honing into my craft and, and being like, are you guys okay that I'm happy and I'm writing songs that don't make you sad? So it's been it's been a really cool experience to kind of grow with my art and grow with my feelings and uh, and, and figure out my inner turmoil, but also my, my happiness and, and light and love. That's amazing. What's what's next, Kate? What's next for you and the band? Oh my gosh! Do you got another day? Can we do? An <laughs> <laughs> can we wrap this up? Go and go again next week? Right on. Um, no, it's just been it's been great. I mean, we had a, such a busy summer. You know, with everything opening up, we, we were super super lucky to play Folk Fest, uh, and I got to meet Jim Cuddy and fawn over him uh. and tell him how much I am in love with his sons, which don't tell my boyfriend that, but, uh, <laughs> he'll never, he'll, he'll never know. Never know. He's not going to watch this. Okay. No, he'll be the first one. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've been super, super lucky to play festivals and to travel a little bit within, within Canada and, and, and take all the necessary safety, safety precautions and things that we need to be doing. But next up is just, you know, Christmas is spending time with my people is, is, is just kind of feeling out what we're going to do next. I've been writing a lot more, so maybe I'll be seeing you a lot sooner, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a pleasure, you know, kind of just embracing the whirlwind that has been my life over the last couple of months. I've been, you know, I've been really lucky to explore other mediums and, and other kind of different things. And it's just all kind of come back to music. So I, uh, I, I've been feeling really energized and really creative in this beautiful space that I get to be here. So, yeah. Kate, it was so great speaking to you. Thanks so much for doing this. We're going to listen to this song. Do you want to tee it up for people? 
Yeah, the song is called Through and Through, and it's a, a really groovy, uh, retro pop kind of feel. I think that we've added a lot of really cool elements, and uh, it's all about celebrating the small, simple things with your love and your person, and I think that the song is equally as sweet uh, as the vibe we've established in the studio. Through and Through, Kate Stevens. If you'd like to support music in Canada, please consider making a donation to the National Music Centre at studiobell.ca slash donate. NMC is a non-profit, non-governmental, charitable organization. We amplify the love, sharing, and understanding of music, and we rely on donor support to create content online and in person in our exhibitions and performance spaces at Studio Bell. Thanks. Now stay tuned for some music. The one I call when I'm awake at two in the morning The one who lay in bed with me while I'm asleep and snoring Eat a whole birthday cake in my silk pajamas The one to hold my hand and be my biggest fan You're my freshly brewed cup of coffee on a rainy afternoon You're my favorite record with all of your scratches and grooves Take a walk and talk about how good it feels Being loved by you Baby, it's to you, you, you The one I wanna spend my life Baby, it's you, you, you I'm the whole wide world together You're my friend Felt as good as I do in your Polaroid But instant film can capture all the colors of my mind You're my freshly brewed cup of coffee on a rainy afternoon You're my favorite record with all of your scratches and grooves Take a walk and talk about how good it feels Being loved by If you like this show, you can check out more of the National Music Center experience online by visiting amplify.nmc.ca. You'll find online performances, articles about Canadian music history, educational videos that connect science to sound, and much more. I'm Graham Lassard. Thanks to our guest today, and thank you for tuning in.